What's going on, everybody? It's John Stamper and excited for you to join us today. Uh, Behind the smile, the crucial role of the dental office manager. And I am very honored and privileged to have with me two individuals that are going to spend a little bit of time with you talking about not only the role of the office manager, but the impact that it has had in the dental practice, as well as just in dentistry in general. So very excited to have with me Lori Streeter, who's the vice president at ADOM, and Dr. Lou Schumann, who is the founder of Seller and Consulting. And having both of you is amazing. It's so good to see you, Lori. I know what we're going to talk about today um, is you're going to get into some of the invaluable, you know, leadership lessons uh, of, of a dental office manager. And Lou's going to share his insight of like how the office manager has helped him over the years and, and everything that uh, that you guys are going to speak of. So it's good to see you. How are you doing? Awesome. This is such an uh, honor to be able to get some time with you and Laurie. This is just special. Yeah, I agree. Nice to see you, John. Nice to see you, Lou. So Laurie, I'm going to turn it over to you uh, to get this conversation started. And I think, uh, you know, where you want to go with this is obviously, you know, have Lou share uh, what his experience has been, you know, just talk about the office manager role in general. And so uh, we'll turn things over to you. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Hello, ADOM Nation. Lou, I'm so excited to be here with you. And I think it's really in my best interest to just imagine that you and I are having one of our great conversations and we're going to let everybody peek into what one of those might look like. And um, let me start by saying that I've been with ADOM for the last 17 years and in dentistry for 35. And Lou told me earlier today, he knows I started when I was four. So we'll just go with that. Um, But More than that, you know, as a former office manager, I can tell you that my conversations with Lou have been very insightful because it was the first time I really had the most in-depth conversation with a dentist where I felt like, oh my gosh, this person gets every ADOM member. And all I can say before I, uh, I turn it over to you, Lou, to tell some of my favorite stories is I'm going to call today... Paula. It's all about Paula. So, you know, we know from an ADOM perspective how important the dental office manager is to a practice, but I really would love it if you would share some of the ways that you know that and from your seat, not mine today, but your seat, what that has been like through the years and what you've experienced. So welcome. Uh, Great to be here and my pleasure. Well, it goes way back when I was four years old also. Um, But uh, in a former life, I was uh, an orthodontist, and my dream was to create a group practice. And that's what I was able to do. And I still remember walking into the space. It was four walls, nothing else there. And my first hire was, and I don't like office manager. I think I've told you that before. I feel that person who is in charge of the practice has... In my world, I always call Paula an operations manager because not just in charge of the office, but truly in charge of the operations of the whole whole business. And we sat there. I still remember looking at four walls and go, okay, let's get out the paint. And we're going to paint it first. And we took that four walls and ultimately turned it into a 10 doctor, 25 team member group practice. And it was very special. It was an incredible, um, over 10 years in part, she wasn't my operations manager. She was, she was my partner. And it was, it was amazing. Um, the importance, the level of impact that, that she provided. I mean, to give you an idea, um, (laughs) To give you an idea, when we started to become more mature, I had my hobby. Um, my passion is soccer. I played for a a national team when I was 18, went on to play in Europe and other places. But anyways, my passion was coaching at that time, and I was coaching the high school women's varsity team. And so I would leave early during the week, uh, to do that. And then my partner, Steve Bader, he was like a crazy, like enthusiast driver where he'd take his car around tracks a hundred miles an hour. And Paul and I used to pray that she'd come 
he'd show up at the office on Monday morning <laughs> that he was still alive. But anyways, after a number of years, um, Paula came to me and said, you know, you've got your hobby that's soccer. Steve's got his hobby, which is enthusiast driving. Uh, do, could I have a hobby too? And I went, of course. After everything you've done, what, what do you want to do? She said, I'd like to leave the office at um, an afternoon a week, I would love to learn how to go horseback riding, learn how to ride a horse. So she went and she learned how to ride a horse. And of course, to do that, you need to rent a horse. And after a, after a year or so, she came to me and she said, listen, I'm going to be in a competition. Uh, would you like to, to come watch watch me compete? And I said, of course I would love to. And I said, how close are you with to that horse that you've been using for the last year? You know, she said, oh my God, I love my horse. I said, that's great. So the, so the competition was about a week later. And when we went to the horse competition and we went to the stall together, there was a big pink ribbon around the horse. I bought her that horse as a way of saying thank you um, for the, 10 years that she had had given us. That's how important I think wow. the role of operations managers. I The office wouldn't be where it was. The growth from the four walls to the the 10 doctor, 25 team member group. You know, we had <clears throat> a, a, tri a tribute to her, and I miss her. A tribute to her is we had 25 team members when we were in a full capacity. And as I always say, we lost 17 of them. And when I am on the podium doing that, the whole audience goes, oh, no. And they went, no, no, you don't understand. Then they came back after they had their babies. Um, we were blessed to have no turnover. Um, wow. And she, and she was the reason why. And so, um, so... I have a question uh, for you. Yeah, go ahead. So... For anyone listening, whether it was be an office manager or a dentist, how did you get to a place of trust where you felt like empowering Paula to do her job, to help your practice grow was important? Because I know there's a lot of dentists that will be listening saying, oh, I don't know, you know, that's really my role. That's really like, how, I'm really curious. I mean, first of all, I love my first dentist. He did not buy me a horse, but my gosh, I mean, the, the, fact that number one, she empowered both of you to have your hobbies and your loves just generates so much enthusiasm. I would think for a dentist to say, oh my gosh, here's somebody who's, who doesn't own the business, but is so committed that she's going to help me figure out a way I can go seek my passion. And then you helped her with hers. I mean, you know, that's one of my favorite stories. So how would you advise a dentist to allow a, an operations manager do their job to the point where it affects their practice the way that you did? Um, I'll put it in a few words. We didn't have two owners at the practice. We had three. Wow. It was me, Steve, and Paula. And the word that's critical to anyone who's listening is ownership mentality. Paula yes. ran the office as an owner, and she was treated that way. The other thing that was really important culturally in our office is that everyone was treated equally. There was no hierarchy. The dentist wasn't put on a platform. You know, the part-time front desk night receptionist was treated exactly the same as one of the dentists in the office. We all learn from each other, and everyone has something that they can teach each other no matter where they come from or what their background is. And so we learned from each other. There, there was no hierarchy. That was very important. Everybody was comfortable in being able to talk honestly about the office. That was key. I mean, one of the things that I think that was also a benefit in the office is that we took advantage, and I've seen this in offices that haven't had this opportunity. You just don't bring in someone new and say, this is how we do our, how you do your job and welcome aboard. Really what we always did is we would bring someone and be it 
you know, a hygienist, an assistant, front desk, anybody, and we go, listen, here's how we work. Let's do this together for the first month. And then based on your experience, tell us how we can be better. So we would want to bring in the experience, you know, of the teams that we would bring in, let them learn our system. Mm -hmm. Instead of going, this is just how you do it. Thank you very much. You know, we bring a hygienist with 15 years of experience or receptionist 15 years of experience. And it's not like, here's our way. It's this is our way for now. And then after you've learned about how we do it, teach us how we can be better. So culture is critical. Respect is even more critical. And the comfort to be able to speak your mind based on what you're experiencing day to day. The other thing is, for the dentist, I don't believe that you manage out of an operatory. I used to call that knee-jerk management. <laughs> the, the, the practitioner's job is to treat the patient and to be given the operations manager the freedom to run the practice. Now, am I part of the team as the practitioner? Yes. And right. did we, would I meet with the operations manager all the time? Yes. In our practice, Steve, my partner, he ran clinical and Paul and I ran the management side. And we would brainstorm we would brainstorm every day. But you know, I used to go to meetings and I would be with my, you know, dental peers and I would go, How are you know, how are things going in the practice? And they're going, Well, we're very nervous because we're not there. And I went, Well, I'm not nervous at all. And they go, Well, why are you not nervous? I said, Because I've cross trained my team. They know how to run the practice without me. And I give them the respect and, and they have the capabilities to do that. So, you know, that that for me, when I was along my my journey, I became the president of Pride Institute. And it was our job to practice, manage and work with many, many different offices. And, sure. you know, you, you get exposed to everybody. I'm sure for the operations managers that are listening to this, they they're sitting there going, you know, yes, no you know, based on some of the things of what we think are the ideal ways that they should be treated and the independence and capabilities they should be given that freedom to be able to do that in working as a team member. So we always looked at Paula as the as a partner. There were three of us, not two of us. Let me ask you a question about that, Lou. So I'm thinking of all the office managers I've met over the years, and there are some dentists that you know, to your, I don't know about to your level of, of give giving and giving of that title of like a partner, but if an office manager is listening or a, or an operations manager, and they don't maybe feel like they have that full commitment from their dentist, like you're talking about, how would you suggest the office manager have that conversation with the dentist? Or what would you like to say to a dentist about how they can utilize their office manager? Well, most of the dentists that I have as friends that I worked with at Pride, etc. I mean, none of us, for the most part, got our MBA in operations management. We're learning, you know, you go from dental school from, into practice. So it's a, the, the thing that's important is, is that that operations manager makes the dentist aware of where they feel comfortable and what they feel they're capable of doing. And if they feel that there's areas they need to learn, you know, one of the things that we did is we gave our team and paid for their education to be able to grow as well. So they could take courses in order to be able to better themselves. And then everybody in the office was dual trained so that we had a person who could take Paula's place if Paula was on vacation or needed sure. went to a meeting. And and so cross-function was critical. Um, and if I'm that ops manager, you, I know it's not an easy thing to do, but you need to be direct with yeah. your doctor and make them aware. I mean, how many times have you gone into an office and realized that there are people that have more capability than they're being given the opportunity to provide? All the time. Yeah. So 
So the honesty of being able to communicate that and not be fearful of that is very important. Most dentists want to have someone to have that capability. They just don't, they might just not have the experience and how to be able to expand that opportunity to the level that is provided. It really comes down to the dentist understanding that there, everyone has something to teach you as the practitioner, be it your assistant, the manager, the desk hygienist. If you create an environment that allows everyone to bring their experience to the office and to be able to be honest about how they feel about how the office can grow, then that practitioner, that's the title of dentist that I, that I want to have as a friend. <laughs> yeah, it's so absolutely. And what's so interesting is when you're talking about, you know, investment in learning and growing, you know, that's, you know, just a shameless plug for ADOM, but you know, that's what we're all about, right? So we provide education for office managers all across the country. And can you believe there are actually dentists out there that won't pay the $199 a month that it takes to, I mean, sorry, not even a month, a year, $199 a year. I mean, that's like Starbucks, right? At the end of the day, it's like going down $20 on McDonald's. It's crazy to me that an office manager still can come to us and say, my dentist is making me pay for my membership to ADOM. So what would you say to office managers, yes. dentists that, that, that are looking at, should I educate my office manager? What does that look like? I mean, to me, this is a no brainer, but I still hear this all the time. Well, I, I'm curious to know, does ADOM have courses to teach the dentist <laughs> about how the importance of the role of the operations manager and to be able to look at the level of responsibilities that they can provide? So no, but would you teach it? Because I'm asking right now. Right now. That? I think Lou Schumann needs to teach that class. And we'll <laughs> put it up with Adolf. So I'm holding you to that, Lou, right now. I got it on camera. Well, the ops manager and the dentist need to work together and learn together. Yes. You know, maybe, I mean, if I was, you know, integrated with Adam, I'd want to see courses for the dentist to understand the role of the of the operations manager. So A, they'll maybe let go. B, yeah. they'll, ha they'll have a better understanding of what that role provides. I mean, God bless Paula, the management issues – Dealing with, you know, we had 25 team members. That, that This is not managing a dental office. This is managing a multi-million dollar business. Right. And that's, and that's what you're providing, you're asking your operations manager to do. So it's not just about, you know, how filling the schedule. There's, I have such respect for the level of, of responsibility that an ops manager has to take on. And just dealing with the people side of it to sure. be able to make it run. The thing for Paula that is why I just love what you are all doing is she didn't have she didn't have anywhere to go at that time. There was a hygiene association, there's a dental association. There was not a dental manager association. And so yeah. you bring such an I know that you have a large following, deservedly so. And if it's ten thousand, it should be a hundred thousand. To be honest, right. I, no, right? no, and I and I appreciate that. And and here's the thing, Lou, and and I think for everybody that's listening or watching, one of our goals in many conversations I've had with Lou is I'm like other people should hear us talk like this. Like this is so such important conversation. I mean, look just that one thing that you said. I'm like, oh, we've got a new course at ADOM. It's going to happen. I mean, that makes total sense because it's so often that we go into practices and people will say, I don't even know what ADOM is. But yet when people know what ADOM is, they're like, I can't even believe you don't know what it is. And and again, I don't think that's that's you stating that just like me, when I was a dental office manager, there was no ADOM. I couldn't talk to my fellow office manager across the country and get answers and all the things that we have privy to now, if we could just take the mindset that you started with when you hired Paula and transitioned that where an office manager, practice administrator, operations manager felt that empowerment, 
I can imagine, I can only imagine the, the, the steam that would happen between the doctor and the office manager. And Lou, I forgot to tell you this a long time ago. Do you know that one of my first articles that was ever published when I first started working for ADOM was how to have a great relationship with your dentist. And I, I still hold that philosophy. And although you and I could talk forever and ever and ever, I do have one more story that I'm hoping you will, will uh, share with everyone. And then just so everybody knows, if you guys all enjoy this, I mean, Lou and I would like to talk here and there and bring some really kind of couch conversation. Uh, I know, Lou, your guitar is behind you. I don't think we're going to sing today, but, you know, there's always that in the future. Um, I think, I think you got a friend by James Taylor would be my, uh, would be my first one because of, of our experience together, but. My mentor, but, you know that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. Me too. My favorite. So here's the story I'd love for you to tell. Cause it's one of my favorite. Well, Paula's story is my favorite, of course. And I like have high esteem for Paula, even though I've never met her. Um, so the story about how you got a call wow. when. Um, this office manager was, or practice practice manager, or whoever it was at the time, I remember parts of it. Somebody called you and said, our associate is driving us crazy. What are we going to do with this situation? So as we close up this first Lori Lou episode one, if you could leave us with that story and what you did and the integral role the staff played and what the outcome was, I would be thrilled for everybody to hear it. Absolutely. I do want to make one point based on wrapping up this part before yeah. I get to the story, which is one of the things that's really important. And I, and I know there's going to be some people listening to this that that concerns me is that you have, now that you have this wonderful association, the things that the managers are going to learn and grow, the question is, is it a challenge for them to go back to the office is that dentist going to listen, learn, and allow the manager yeah. to grow? Yes. Yeah. I hope the answer is yes. That's why I'm saying some of what I'd like to see with ADOM is bring the dentist in because I'm sure that of everything that the pearls they get from the association, is it a challenge for them to be able to adopt them when they get back? Is that you know dentist giving them the freedom? That's that's such a great point, Lou. And I can tell you that, you know, after the ADOM conference, we ask and encourage everyone that attends. We do have a lot of dentists that attend, but mostly mostly the team, right? So when the 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 office manager or practice administrator goes back to their practice, we have them take like a detailed note. We have give them ideas on how to approach these things with the dentist. It's so interesting that even on our website. Uh, which we're almost sold out, which is great for this year. Um, but we have a little thing in there that says, would you like to show your dentist how your time at the conference is going to provide a strong ROI for their practice? And so we actually have a letter that they can detail with all the classes they take just to try to execute that re that relational conversation. But you got such a great point. We really need to start educating dentists on why the office manager should have this level of experience and knowledge. Well, one of the things we did in my office, and I did this in other offices, we'll see if the dentists would agree to this. We used to rate all our members. The team got used to answer questions about the doctors. The doctors got to, it was a survey and it talked, it literally broke down about what it was like working with the doctors, with the doctors, with the team. And then we would, and then after that was all done, we would collate all the answers so that the doctor wouldn't know the person that it came from and the team wouldn't know which doctor it came from. So we would then put together a document that said, here's how you did. This is, here's what's going well. Here's, it seems like where you need to improve. And we would do that for the whole office so that the doctors would find out, this is what I mean by everyone's treated equally, they would find out how they're doing. If they're doing well, where they could improve, and that they would also then talk to the team members, and we would sit down with each one of them without them knowing individually where all that information came from, which leads me to the story. Yes. Which was when I was in practice management, 
I got a call from the owner of of an off of the office, and he said, "Dr. Schumann, I I need you to come to the office right away today." And I went, "Well, I'm I'm I have meetings," and he said, "No, no, I need you to come right away." And I went, "What's the problem? I need you to fire one of my doctors." You need me to fire one of your doctors, and I need you to do it today. And I went, why do I need to do it today? He said, because everyone who works up front came to me this morning and said they're leaving permanently, and they're not coming back. My manager, my whole front desk team are all leaving. <laughs> They've had it. So either either you have to come fire the doctor or I'm going to lose my whole management team at up front and the manager. I went, oh, my God. I said, you got to be kidding. He said, no, I'm not kidding. I said, all Come right. Now. Come now. So I canceled my meetings. I got in the car. I drove to the office. I, I sit down with the owners, the debt to Stoner. And he said, "This." He said, I said, what's happening? And he said, I, I'm not even going to tell you. Bring the team and let them tell you. So I said, okay. So the operations manager, the front desk the receptionist come in, and I said, is it true that you're all leaving? Yes. Today? Yes. I said, what's going on? And he said, the associate, we've had it. I said, well, what does he do? Well, if we're on the phone, he picks up pens and throws them at us. He, if he's not immediately hand, handled to, he starts yelling at us. And then... He embarrasses us in front of the patients, saying that I'm glad that he, the quote was, I'm glad that, you know, you really like me as a dentist, because obviously you coming here isn't the best with having people like these people who don't know what they're doing. And this was going on constantly to the point where they finally went to the owner dentist said, we're done. So I met with the whole team after they told me all of that. I said, I have a favor to ask. And they said, what's that? Can you give me one chance? Give me two weeks to try to change him. Would you do that for me? It was close. <laughs> it wasn't an easy sell. And um, they said, okay, Dr. Schumann, we'll give you the two weeks. I said, great. So I bring the doctor in. He goes, hi there, my name's Dr. Schumann, nice to meet you. And I went, do you know why I'm here? And he goes, no, why are you here? He said, I'm here because I've been asked to fire you. He went, what? Are you kidding me? I went, no. I said, I'm very serious. I said, do you have any idea the level of hurt you've created up front with the manager and with the front desk? What do you think his answer was? No. I had no clue. No clue. No, I didn't know that. Really? I thought I'd treat them very well. I went, no, they're all leaving. And I said, so the choice is them or you. And guess what? Guess who, who's who's going to be leaving today? Not them. Then he started getting really upset. He had, you know, was like really affected, of course. He had, in his own mind, had no idea. Right. So that is there anything I can do? to turn this around. And I said, actually, there is. I said, I asked the team if I could have two weeks to try to turn this around. And they very nicely said yes. And he said, okay, what, 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 what do I need to do? I said, oh, it's very simple. We are canceling your patients for the next two weeks. And starting Monday, you're going to work full time at the desk. That's what you're going to do. You're going to answer the phones. You're going to do the appointments. You're going to work with the patients. You will be on the front desk for two weeks. And he did. He worked there for two weeks. And when he was done, he sent flowers to everybody up at the front desk, took them all to lunch, and apologized and said he had no idea. Because to me, not that I'm being biased, but I think the person and the team, their work up front, that's the toughest job of all. 
because you are balancing so many things at once between the patient in front of you, the phone, insurance, managing the, the patients coming in, coming out, the front desk, the waiting room. To me, it's the toughest job at the, at the office and, and one that you have to really know how to juggle so well. So there's so that's what happened, and the good news was at least the last time I checked, he's still there. He's still there. Oh my gosh, that's I I don't know I don't know which one's my favorite, but those are definitely <laughs> by far my two favorite Lou Schumann stories. Well, <laughs> let me let me let me close with this, Lou. First of all, you know it has been my honor. John Stamper introduced you and I, and we have become fast friends and. You know, there's so many great things about dentistry. I love every position in the practice. My best friend was our hygienist when I was an office manager and I lost her to Lou Gehrig's disease. And it was an impactful time in my life. And I remember when I got my first big corporate job, I said, I was going to work at a DSO and I said, I'm not going to be around as much. And she said, you go. And, you know, and we lost her about a year later. It's uh-huh. profound when people take the time to really appreciate every single position in the practice, how important it is that we all work together as a team. And I love how you said everybody was treated differently. There was no real hierarchy. To me, a lot of times hierarchy is just simple respect for someone else's position. And you've done nothing but articulate that this whole half hour about, you know, how just simply trusting and allowing and, and, you know, I think of clinicians as, you know, the two by two square that they're looking at trying to do the best dentistry. It's very hard to do that when you don't trust the person up front or the people up front to do their job and do their job well. So um, I, I hope you don't mind. I, I do want to, if anybody's watching this that doesn't know what ADOM is, the American Association of Dental Office Management, um, you can find us at dentalmanagers.com. Um, and I would just say start there because I don't know, like you, Lou, I remember being an office manager and seeing everybody go off to meetings and I stayed behind to answer the phone because there was no classes for me. Now we're in a different time, right? That was a long time ago. There are lots of classes for office managers and for teams and for operations and treatment coordination. But at the end of the day, it really does take a special understanding of what you want out of that role as a dentist. What do you want that team to feel like when they're up front? And I'd love for you to close out with just maybe some advice for a dentist that might be watching or for an office manager of how you would go about taking that first step um, to gain that type of understanding for that role. Well, leadership, in my opinion, is not created by title. It's earned. Yeah. And, 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 that's, and the thing is, is that the practitioner needs to give that operations manager the freedom to be able to create their own culture. Our job for the most part is clinically to be the best we can be. Our leadership as an owner really has a lot to do with our clinical capabilities. And if if you're going to have an office that's truly going to grow, I mean, we went from zero to a multi-million dollar practice because we gave the operations manager the freedom to lead, to recognize that we're, our specialty is how, treating the patients clinically and personally, it was the operations manager job to run the business. And if a practitioner is given, gives the operation manager the freedom to lead and to work as a partner, that's the true definition of success. Awesome. Well, on that note, Lou, I would love for anyone listening, if you'd like more conversations between Lori and Lou and figure out what kind of topics they'd like to hear, um, hit the show notes. Make sure you reach out to us. Um, My email is Lori at dentalmanagers.com. I'm easily accessible. We would love to hear any feedback or things you'd like to hear going forward. Lou, I can't thank you enough for your time. Um, I just... I just treasure our friendship and you have made such a huge impact on dentistry. That it has been my honor to talk to you today and all of Adom nation to be able to hear from a great like you. I appreciate it. Well, listen, I'm so happy that Adom exists and, and it, and you're a huge reason why it does. And it, it's something that's been needed for such a long time. 
and I'm hoping that it's 10,000 now, you sell out your meetings. But the fact is, is that I hope that a meeting like this will give more managers the impetus to recognize they have a halt, that ADOP yeah. is a halt, where they can learn and grow. And, you know, like you said, it's really important that the practitioners recognize that important. Some do. I'm sure there are people that are sitting there going, this is, that's my practice practitioner. That's my dentist. He, he gets it. And others are going, let's, <laughs> let's get a, a dentist operations manager meeting together so that some yeah. of the things can rub off and that dentist can yeah. recognize their importance. So thank you for the time. Love. Of course. <laughs> Next time we got to talk music with everybody. We'll have to talk music, and I would love to talk to you about our distinction program where office managers can earn distinctions with ADOM. We have so much more to talk about. Let's go for part two. Thank you for being with us, everyone, and goodbye to ADOM Nation. Take care, everyone.